Hello guys, my dear code lovers, lead code lovers, and we want to go over the rest of the project we started on longest common prefix. In this project, we want to find, we have a list of strings, like five strings, for example, right? And we want to find the first part of it, the longest part of these strings that is in common between all of them and it's at the beginning of each of these strings so <clears throat> let's go over lead code we are still on easy problem sets difficulty easy and you can see that longest common prefix we are in this one again let's memorize the syntaxes class solution colon function inside the class def name of the function uh, input arguments in the parentheses arrow and the output type again colon um, colon is super important in python uh, it is how uh, blocking and indentation works in python okay we were working on this part and we said uh, before starting to find the common prefix among all the strings uh, let's find let's define the function gcd that grabs two strings and <coughs> tells us what is its longest common prefix so it's not like a list of strings but two strings and we said we want to implement gcd on all of these elements of these strings so That's our function. By the way, I think it's the first time you are seeing my screen. Uh, thanks to my friend Amin, uh, we added this feature to our channel. Now you have a better understanding and a closer look to what we are doing. It's not just some abstract notion on the air. All right, class solution. <clears throat> so take self, CR, two string S1 and S2, and GCD is P, and whenever they are equal, we add them until uh, we saw a point that they're not equal, right? It's here. <coughs> So what is wrong with this code? I, let's do it again. Wait, and and is not uh, allowed in Python. Uh, is that okay now? Okay. What is wrong with this code? Chat GPT. Uh, I don't want this page to be open. Oh, so in Python we don't have 
Um, and and interesting, isn't it? So again, one important thing that we want to learn. Our goal is not the algorithms for now, at least. Syntaxes are more important. So we should write and. Logical and is and. Perfect. All good. What's wrong? We don't have colon. Is replacement with the while condition you should close uh, what do you mean by close well we didn't close it it's here oh okay we are missing the parenthesis Dude, chat GPT is amazing. Finding this parenthesis could be very difficult, but chat GPT is now doing it for us. And I really appreciate that. Just, um, so X is an instant of class solution. We have two names, Amir and Amin. Their GCD is AMI. A M I. Let's check if the uh huh. Now what if the two strings do not have the same length? Okay, it's working. Okay, our function is working. Why is it working though? Mm, let's see. We have two strings, they have length. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense to work. Last time we didn't have this term, I the counter less than the length of the minimum of the length of the two strings. It made us problem. Um, and by adding it, the code is running right. Let's just have this I want to see what does code do with an empty string so it's working all right wait a second if one code uh, string is in there is no common prefix among the input string all right okay so this one also matches the output <clears throat> now we have we have this function let's Take the string uh, and what should I name it? Is it called longest common prefix? I better not control C, control V here because I have to memorize this stuff. Uh, Definition, longest common prefix. By the way, L is started lowercase. Takes cell, takes the STRS. STRS is the list of all the strings. And it uh, returns an STR. All right, let's go over it. So now we have GCD. Uh, what I want to do is we can make a for loop. Yes, I like this. P <coughs> will be, okay, that's what I'm thinking. P will be the first string. Then we compute it, make the GCD of the first one with the second one. It gives the longest part remained. 
Then we make the GCD of this first two with the third one and we just roll it over the whole SDRS and we find the solution. So P is SDRS uh, zero. Um, and while I say for for I in range um, zero land. Well, actually, I want one, right? Because I already have the plan of STRS. Um, colon. Look, when you put the colon, indentation works. Um, I want to say P is GCD. Uh, I should use x dot gcd or gcd itself is enough. No, okay. Here is another learning point for us. In a class, when we are calling a function inside the class, should we use gcd or x dot gcd? I don't know. Let's see. gcd. Um, P and STRS I <coughs> and that's it. Then I want to then I want to send return P. Let's see. Ah, uh, okay. What's wrong? I don't know what is wrong, but it seems again, um, I forgot some syntax. We don't want, I have to memorize. Dude, it is easy, especially now that we have chat GPT, but I have to learn because I am learning for the interview. And in the interview, I won't have chat GPT. Okay, range is wrong because why? Okay, I should first, I should use self.gcd by the way. And um, here, range of one to len of strs. What did I write? Oh, in, what is missing? Oh, it's not column here, it's comma. And here is self. So, <coughs> range, learn how to use it. Um, what's wrong? Name list is not defined. Where did I use list? Uh, in the input argument. Let's see what did ChatGPT do. <coughs> well, ChatGPT added some lines in the code to <coughs> to stop the code once. Uh, we have a null string when the string is null like here it checks if it is like that I don't want to move the code move on in the code like move forward like here it breaks out of the for loop but I don't have the concern for that part for that <coughs> <coughs> 
My concern is here, this part. Uh, oh, okay, that's it. From typing <coughs> import list. Isn't it so basic to... CRS. Wait a second, I want to learn why it should be import. <clears throat> okay, add it from typing import list to import the list type hint. So it should be, it's not included and you have to import it from typing. Yes, what did I wrong? Yes. Well, ChatGPT is saying <coughs> it also fixed my for loop, my for loop when I am using a range of one to len of strs what is the change for well it used the same thing though we are going over this indices of strs oh okay here if you have a list for access to the elements of the list you have to use brackets Another syntax. All right. <clears throat> Let's go. I want to see. Um, SDRS is. Why can't we write? SDRS is a mere. Uh, I mean. Amber Heard, Amber, uh, okay, that's enough. Uh, wait, is that a line code? It's not a code, huh? All right, now it's a code. <coughs> and I want to have X dot okay now I remember last time it was tap now we have GCD and we have longest common purpose by the way <coughs> inside as we said inside the class because we are using a function defined inside the class we are using self dot GCD X dot this and I want to say strs Let's see what happens. AM. That's that's working. What if I say Pamber? Working. Okay, I think that's the code I want to submit. Guys, I cannot talk at all. <coughs> so now that we are pasting in lit code should we also import let's see control v ah fuck submit oh 
Okay, it is accepted, but it seems it could be <coughs> much more efficient. Like we are on the top 17, uh, we only could, our code did better than 17% of the codes on lead code. Uh, we can we can make it better, but it's accepted. Honestly, I don't want to make it much efficient or anything for now, unless it is part of the <coughs> problem. <sighs> That's it. Let's go. Let's uh, next problem. Valid parentheses, and I want to do ten easy. Easy ones are good because you can focus on syntaxes. Algorithm is not taking your time. Dude, my <coughs> throat. I should do something about it. Given a string, given a string s, given a string s containing just a character, dude, dude. Okay, brackets, parentheses, and curly braces. Determine if the input string is valid. And input string is valid, probably they should pair up. Um, open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets. Open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So you have a parenthesis and a bracket. It should close with a bracket and parenthesis, not parenthesis, bracket, parenthesis, bracket. It should be like a mirror, right? <clears throat> Every closed bracket has a corresponding open brackets of the same type. Well, definitely. I think it should be the mirror, right? Mirror is a good idea. Uh, oh, okay. It's not just a mirror. If you look at this input, the input string is like a, a pair of parentheses. A pair of brackets, a pair of curly braces, it is a valid, <coughs> it's a valid string, so mirroring doesn't work for this. <coughs> um, so, how can we find, how can I find, um, we have these parentheses opened. When does it close? How should I find it? <clears throat> Wait, what about? Oh, wait, I, its examples are not clear enough. What happens, like, is, is it okay to be have a, is it true or, I want to see if in the on input argument, there is this possibility that we have open parenthesis, uh, open bracket, close bracket, close parenthesis in my interpretation of this problem this should be a true situation and was what I was talking about mirroring 
but is it that If it is just pairs of parentheses, curly braces, and brackets, then this is not very difficult, right? Right when you open the parentheses, you should close it. Let's see. Let's say we can have nested brackets if you have nested brackets how can you make sure that the string is correct So I'm going to have something like this, this, this. Let's show you. I want something like this. Be true. Um, I go read the string, right? This string is given to me. I go read it. I notice the first open parenthesis, right? And I have to find its pair. Otherwise, it's not <coughs> true. Next letter. Let's ca next character is an open bracket. Nope, but it doesn't mean that the string is false or wrong. <coughs> um, I want to have a list that whenever one of the brackets closed, I can say, okay, this is matched, you know? <sighs> Assume we are just using parentheses, right? And we have three open parentheses and we have two closed ones. We want to return false, right? <coughs> what we say is that, okay, I read the first one, it's an open parenthesis. Once I have an open, I'm looking for a closed one. I can go all the way through the string and find one is the closed. Uh, How is that an easy problem, by the way? <coughs> All right. <coughs> so this is open. I will go check the next. Next is open as well. Next one is open as well. Nothing. Next one is closed. When next one is closed, I want to say that, okay, the third one is paired up. And then I go check the fifth one, which is closed. And I say, nice. Second one is also paired up. And third one is
but the problem is that I don't know when they pair up you know like we can have three parentheses which one of them are pairing like even if we have like a true case three open parentheses in a row and then three closed parentheses in a row which one of them I am uh, pairing up like I want to <coughs> pair up the first open parenthesis to the last closed parenthesis right so I want to pair that's a very good situation I want to pair the first open one to the last closed one Mm -hmm. I will read on the string. I say first one is open, second one is open, third one is open. Do I need to have a counter? Maybe adding a counter helps, right? I have a count on how many parentheses are open, right? So I'm going forward, right? I'm saying, okay, I already had three parentheses open. I have to make sure these are closed. So I see the first closed parentheses, okay, minus one. That's a good deal. Let's assume we are just using parentheses. <coughs> and S is the number of the <coughs> open parenthesis we met s is an string s is a is an uh, uh, well a string our string is called s let's call the string s and find a, another variable for for the counter um, so s is my string and it is three open parentheses in a row and three closed parentheses in a row. All right. And P is an a string, not an a string. P is a list which <coughs> each element of P, like P0, says how many open parentheses we already had up to S0, right? P0 counts the number of open uh, parentheses, right? So we have P0 is one, P1 is two, because why number two is, S1 is also an open parenthesis. P2 is three, then P3 is when on, on index three, S, Three is a closed parenthesis. So we <coughs> go down instead. So P3 is two, P4 is one, and P5 is zero, right? And if you have P minus one zero, which gives the last index, then we are paired up, that's all good. All right, that's perfect. Can we have situation that it doesn't work? What if it is open parenthesis, closed parenthesis, open, open, closed, closed, still works. <clears throat> so if we are only using parenthesis, it is working. 
or if it is only brackets, it's working. If it is only curly braces, it is working. Now that we mix them, how can we keep count? Um, and also the order of opening and closing parentheses and uh, curly braces and brackets matter now because you may have a parenthesis open, bracket open, parenthesis closed, <coughs> bracket closed, wait, it is not true. Dude, okay, I have to go. P, thanks for watching. Oh, wait. I can pause recording now. That's amazing. Control Shift uh, A. Control Shift D.